So I started software when I was 20 years old, pursuing my computer science degree at the University of Houston. We started our company as a technology company, and I was looking forward to running my own business, having the freedom, and potentially making a lot of money in the process. And to be honest, in about 10 years of doing just that, I had believed that I had hit the pinnacle of success. Eight-figure company, I had my pilot's license and I was flying around Texas in a Cessna whenever I wanted to. You would call it living the American dream, especially as an immigrant into this country. But in 2015, which was about 12 to 13 years of running this business, almost everything just came shattering down. We were losing employees uh, left and right, and our organization was stifled by the toxic culture that was brewing inside of our company. And on the verge of bankruptcy and struggling to survive, I made the decision to lay off a large number of our staff and did so in a very inhumane manner. This wasn't market conditions or clients changing their mind or our employees' fault, which is what I originally thought it was. It was actually all my fault. I was incredibly selfish. I was arrogant. I would talk down to people, humiliate them, um, you know, make them feel really small. And I basically was responsible for the toxic culture at Softway. Almost going bankrupt was really uh, a result of my behaviors. I had set the tone for the rest of my leaders to behave just like me. And I had asked my leaders to behave just like me because that's how I believed that organizations needed to be run. You know, I had modeled a lot of my behaviors by looking at the corporate leaders that I had worked with. And I thought emulating them was the best way to do it. I can only blame myself. I was feared by everyone. The hallways would grow quiet as I walked through them. And when I would call my team in India, I found out many years later that they would toss the phone like a hot potato because they didn't want to speak with me. I was a really bad boss and a terrible CEO. I began to wonder why this happened and what got me here. I asked myself, did I care for the people I led? And in a moment of introspection, I realized that I did not care for them at all. In order to get our company back on track, I needed to change. I needed to change my mindset from I lead my team to I serve my team. I committed to becoming a vulnerable, empathetic and trusting leader. I tried to create a circle of safety where people could learn and grow from their mistakes. I wanted to also make sure that there was an environment of forgiveness. And by doing that, we were able to create an environment of belonging and inclusion. I joined right before Muhammad started transforming. And what was interesting is that he had a reputation of his reactions to either bad news or controversial or difference of opinions. And I had a colleague come up to me in private and said he disagreed with something that Muhammad wanted, wanted to do. And he wasn't sure how to approach Muhammad and he was actually nervous. He wanted me to go and carry the message to Muhammad because he felt Muhammad might not react the same way. I counseled him and said, I don't think that you're giving Muhammad a fair shot. I think that you should take your feedback or your idea and just let him react. I promise he's probably not gonna do what you think he's gonna do. After building up that courage, he set up that meeting, had that conversation with Muhammad, and Muhammad did the exact opposite of what he expected. He thanked him for the idea. He actually championed the idea and moved forward with the idea. And that, that person came back to me and said, oh my gosh, Muhammad has changed. Like I would have never expected him to react the way he did. This journey has no destination. It's a permanent state of transformation. And I still strive to make sure that I can continue to be a leader that our team can constantly rely on to know that I will always do the right thing. Over time, I was able to gain the trust of our team. And other leaders at Softway began to introspect on their behaviors too. And so they joined me in our journey to serve our team. To spread this new culture at Softway, we began to communicate transparently, host retreats and trainings, 
so that everyone may go on their own behavior change journey. And as a result, our culture began to thrive. People began to care for each other, support one another, and that resulted in our business picking up. We not only ended up surviving almost a near closing down of Softway, but we ended up thriving to where we were able to triple our revenues, increase our account size from six figures to seven figures, and most importantly, our attrition dropped to 13% from what it used to be at 30%. People began to show up to work with their full selves. And we began to notice that as we treated each other as humans, we began to do better work. It unlocked something in us, something more creative, something more inspired. And it was almost like as we treated each other better with allowing people to speak in conversations and meetings, bringing more creativity to the conversations that we were having, our clients were seeing it going, we want more of that and that and that. When you start trusting people and you empower them, often they go above and beyond to do the things that need to be done uh, because they don't want to disappoint you and they care about the work they're doing and you're, you're growing and developing them as you're going along. So overall, we're just more productive. We're closer as a team. We were able to, you know, call out when things aren't exactly, when you don't know what you're doing and we can help each other brainstorm work through it. And so it's just overall a, a greater work environment, I think.